Hello and good morning everyone. My name is Vijaya and welcome back to my channel. Oh wait, is it morning or is it noon or whatever? Whenever you watch this video, whatever the time is, just pretend as if I said it. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good night, good evening, whatever lah, huh? Okay, back to me or oh, back to the topic we're gonna talk about today. So today I'm gonna talk about the Orang Asi community. It's actually based on a book reading event that she went a few months back. So what prompted me to go to this book reading event? So a few years back, I actually went to this volunteer program and we were supposed to like come up with a plan on how we can impact the community and what we on which areas would we like to contribute to, to make an impact on. And so I brought up the issue of Arasi to my group mates and the one guy was like, oh, I'm not really sure about that because the Arasi want to maintain their lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. They're not interested in education, blah, blah, blah. You know, those kind of things. And I just don't quite agree with his statement because I don't think it's fair to generalize the whole community based on the action of a small number of people. But I did not have any proof. I did not have anything to back up my opinion. So when the opportunity presented itself a few months back with this book reading event. So it's a book reading event. Um, they are they were launching a book called Kami Pun Ada Hak Untuk Bersekolah, Wanita Orang Asli Bersuara, which meant we too have the right to education, Orang Asli Women Speak Out. And obviously, I knew I needed to go to this event, so of course I clicked going to the event. I actually went to the event after work. I took the train to Karinchi and I took a grab to the building, which is funny really because you know what? The building is just right across the train station. And I was like, oops. And then when I get into the grab, uh, the driver was like, you know, it's just across the road, right? And I was like, um, yeah, but it's like night time and I don't feel safe walking. So, yeah, me being paranoid as usual. So, in this book reading event, we actually had these people, these Orang Asi women on stage and they were reading uh, their stories because these are like short stories, like essays. And so they're they read out their stories and then they also asked the audience to read out some excerpts from their stories and then we actually not excerpts lah because it's memang the story memang that short lah so it is really enlightening to actually hear it from themselves and there were things that i was definitely definitely not aware of and i am here to share it with you guys okay so first let's start with statistics so between the year of 2010 to 2018 around 22.4 percent of orang asli kids drop out from school between standard six and standard one this is according to jakua 2018 and then in 2018 the dropout rates is 17 percent and in 2014 41 percent of the students who entered form 1 in 2010 drop out even before they entered form 5 this is again according to jacqua 2018 so what are the reasons why this orang asli drop out from school so based on the stories the stories are in the book and they read it out during the event. So I think that is a recurring theme across the story. Uh, not all, for some of it, like cases like they were being bullied by their own f classmates. Some are being not treated, about some are being treated unfairly by their teachers. And some have issues with transportation. Some have issues with financial and some have issues with the with the syllabus itself so there are a few stories that i've picked that i would like to share with you guys and so i'll start with the story by yana so yana told the story of her going to school for the first time she was accompanied by her mother and her mother waited for her the whole day because she's not she was not used to school and after that she told her mom that it's okay she can she can be in school alone because she would like to be independent and her mother 
did not need to accompany her anymore and she was really happy with school she had a lot of friends and then one day she decided to move school to to transfer to a different school because she would like to stay in hostel because she did not want to burden her family because for her to go to school they need to wake up really early and she felt that it's better for her to stay in hostel with her friends and also she was really excited because everyone was so nice to her she had two best friends one is Sally and one is Ayu but then at the same time there's also this situation where there's this teacher that insulted her classmate to the point that this teacher actually said if I teach monkeys they'll probably be smarter than you guys and then this sassy kid this woman she was super sassy when she was a kid and she said Go a lot if you really want to teach monkeys, you can go. I would like to see how smart the monkeys are going to be. And obviously, the, the teacher was offended and she left the class. But then she came back and apologized. And then when she entered Form 1, she met more people. She was really friendly. She befriended everyone, regardless of ethnicity and religion. And everyone is happy. But then as she entered the form two, there's a bunch of kids that started to mock Orang Asli. And then this girl, this woman, oh my god, I love her. She's so sassy. She, she defended herself. She didn't, she, it's like, she's super brave she stood up for herself and then she actually met the teacher and told the teacher about it and then these kids ended up in counseling and i just love this kid for that i wish i was as sassy as well when i was a kid but i was not but then yeah hopefully this could be an inspiration for you guys and for your future children or whatever i don't know there's also another situation where there's this teacher who openly disliked orang asli and and she, and this teacher was like openly disgusted with the orang asli community and that's why this te particular teacher did not like the orang asli and then this teacher ended up being in counseling so this girl ended her story with with her hope that there will be no more discrimination against the orang asli kids and i hope the same too like bullying is not cool it is not cool it is not cool it is not cool okay it is super not cool and for the victims i hope you will find someone who will be able to protect you from someone older who will be able to protect you from these bullies and this girl is super lucky because her teacher that she reported to actually believe her and take and actually took action you know so good for her I'm happy for her. Okay, so next to the next story, let's do this. Okay, that's the story by Rose Dila and Rose Dila. So, she started school in 2007 and then she finished SPM in 2015. She was not very confident. She was not as confident as other people. Her mother is a housewife and her father is... A rubber tapper who helped her with the school finances and she has five siblings and when she was in school she said that she faced a lot of obstacle in terms of the syllabus but not not the syllabus in terms of the way they teach because she has problem catching up with the way the people with the teachers teach and sometimes they teach too fast and sometimes they just don't even bother to care for the orang asli community probably because they don't believe that the orang asli community the orang asli kids have the same potential as the other kids and at the same time the teachers are more focused on the smarter kids and give less attention to the to the less smart kids is that a word is that a term and because of that she felt kind of demotivated so she ended up not getting any offers from any organization any education institution and then she decided to join a program to learn english 
in SOLS 24-7 in Greek and the volunteer teacher over there in Greek uh, and this volunteer teachers over there selected her to join a program in KL for free and this program kind of burdened her because of the trans uh, transportation costs and the living costs because this center is not a government organization but this program has changed her so much in terms of skills and in terms of education and she ended her story with she wanted the youngsters to open their mind to grab any opportunity because if you want to succeed it starts with education and education is not just about getting good results it's also about the soft skills the hard skills and she said, do something what you want to achieve and not wait for other people to push you. And I think that is very nice way to end it. So from here, what we learn is that there are people who do not care about the orang security. They feel like orang the kids do not have the same, but do not have any potential to succeed in any field. And I don't think that's fair. I think the, the, the fact that some teachers focus too much on smarter kids are actually common actually quite normal but then again normal and common doesn't mean it's good doesn't mean it's healthy because everyone should be given equal opportunity mm -hmm. because everyone has the ability to succeed if they are given the chance okay there's the story by rosita she started school in 2005 and, uh, and she continued her study in high school and she stayed in hostel when she was in four months or four and five because the school is really far from her home and the distance from the village to the school is like five hours so she learned to be independent and when she was in high school she was really active in sports she was um she won a lot of um Tournaments, is that what you call it? Tournaments, I suppose. Yeah, she represented a school in a lot of events like the 200 meter run and 100 meter run, and she's really happy with her um, achievements. But then in school, she was also often, bu often bullied by other students, and one of the worst bullying cases that she ever faced was when she was in Form 4. They use language like hey or honestly you're ugly and uh, and blah 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 and she was really really mad about it like she was really sad about it but then she's lucky to have a really nice teacher called Chego Kartini and Chego Kartini talked to the kids who bullied her and because of this bullying incidents she felt like she couldn't focus on her studies because she was always mocked by other students and this kind of demotivated her she failed her SPM and she regretted the fact that she didn't study but then again she said you can't cry over spilled milk so she left school and went back to the village and helped her, f her parents to you know uh, because the parents has a farm like a small farm where they, the father I think is a rubber tapper and the mother plant veggie vegetables and she ended her story with a message for the school kids for school kids first never never feel like there's something wrong with you when other kids mock you when other kids insult you just go on and so there's actually really important stories in this book and I can't possibly tell you Every single story that's in this book, that are in this book. So I suggest you get this book if you'd like to find out more. But in general, what I learned from this event, from hearing from the people themselves, is that there's so many factors that affect the kids that may have affect the decision to go to school and for one there's there's this issue where these kids have to be separated from their family because the distance from the village to the school is really really far that they have to stay in hostel 
at the age of six or seven that is really super young can you imagine being in a hostel staying in a hostel away from your family at a really really young age that's crazy and some of them even go to school with by standing at the back of the lorry this kind of reminds me of the philippines a bit in my mother's hometown but yeah and then there's also the issue of um, other than the issue of transportation and the accessibility to school there's also the issue with poverty and also the issue with the syllabus itself because after the reading event we also have some discussion we were split it into groups and we had a face-to-face -face or one-to-one -one discussion with the orang asli women and then one of them pointed out a very important thing which i was definitely not aware of it's about how the syllabus and the surroundings that's so different it did not reflect the culture and the history and the lifestyle of the orang asli they do not feel included the experience has been affected by that so hopefully the national syllabus can be more inclusive the orang asli community that will be so great and also the role of the teachers are really important they are really really great teachers who really care about the orang asli kids but also a small number of teacher teachers who seem to underestimate these orang asli kids and that's not that's really not fair and of course the bullying cases which demotivates the orang asli kids be this became a huge factor in why orang asli kids drop out from school and that is really not good it's really really unhealthy and many of them are actually interested in school but because of these factors poverty bullying uh, distance to school and others became the reason why they drop out from school and return to the village and this is really really not something that should happen and because despite of these obstacles the orang asli has their dreams has their hopes and some of them actually manage to to continue their studies and i think we should stop the generalization the stereotype that are not interested in education because that is not true they too deserve quality education and quality education is definitely for all so guys that's all from me today i hope we learned something new today and i hope for those of you who are really interested in finding more finding out more about this issue please get this book or please do more research about it if you can help the orang asli community that will be great look out for charity websites uh certain organization ngos Look out for them. Try to help. That would be so great. So thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.